Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode and I'm so excited. We have Wendy Myers. She's the founder of MyersDetox.com. She's a detox expert. She's a functional diet diagnostic nutritionist and she's from Los Angeles, California. Is that right? Yes, it is. I just moved to Huntington Beach, so real happy about that. I just, I went there a, little, a few weeks ago. It was beautiful. Actually, it rained every day. I was yeah. there. <laughs> and they were like, like, it never rains here. We were like, they're like, we don't know why it's raining. <laughs> just the one time a year. <laughs> yes. We there. Um, but anyway, I know that you just finished writing a number one best-selling author. You are the number one best-selling author of Limitless Energy and How to Detox Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. It's like, oh my gosh. So um, it's such an honor to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about your background and how did you get into this? Well, I, just like a lot of people, was searching for my own uh, health yeah. issues, uh, my answers for my own health issues, and uh, was struggling like a lot of women um, in their 30s with uh, trouble losing weight, brain fog, fatigue, uh, really not feeling that great emotionally, even though my life was great uh, otherwise. And I was exercising, I was eating right, I was taking amazing supplements, I was doing everything right. And I still didn't feel good, uh, mm -hmm. physically or emotionally emotionally and I just something was wrong I knew something was just intuitively something was wasn't right in my body and so I went to my doctor and did all these tests and found out I had thyroid issues I had nutritional deficiencies I had the hormone levels of a menopausal woman at 37 and I was not too thrilled to get that news <laughs> and then so uh, like a lot of people I, w I went on dr. Google and was looking for answers to naturally address my hormone and other health issues because I did the doctor wanted to put me on medications and hormone replacement therapy and so heavy metals has been such a huge topic right now and we're hearing all the time you know everyone's like detox detox and a lot of people just don't really know what this means so can you just explain to the listeners how they can find out if they have an issue with heavy metals and what are some symptoms they might be experienced and how do they get rid of them well, you know, heavy metals are present in our air, food, and water. So a lot of people aren't aware that they may not be feeling well because of heavy metal toxicity they have built up in their body over decades. And some of the symptoms they can experience is brain fog. Fatigue is a huge one, uh, one of the number one issues that are caused by toxic metals, uh, adrenal fatigue, so interference in their estrogen, testosterone, therefore their libido, their muscle mass, too much fat, trouble losing weight, uh, their stress hormones, metals interfere in production of stress hormones like cortisol, so that's that get up and go hormone that gets you wide awake in the morning, keeps you alert throughout the day. And then metals also interfere in production of energy. And so they do this in a number of different ways, but people can get all types of issues, blood sugar regulation issues, uh, brain fog, memory issues, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia. I mean, really any type of symptom that people have, there's a metal, an underlying metal that can be interfering in that metabolic function. So where are you on your journey? I know you said that what got you into it was that you kind of, you know, we're having these kind of issues. Have you 100% healed yourself? Are you at 95%? Where are you at? Yeah, well, I don't think everyone is com anyone's completely detoxed, but I've certainly, you know, spent a number of years detoxing and I feel really great today. And I probably removed, you know, 90% of my metals. Um, but, you know, many people today have decades of uh, toxins in their body that they've accumulated over the years and we're exposed to hundreds of toxins every single day so never, no one's ever 100% detoxed uh, but you kind of work on detoxing more intensive type of program and then you can do a maintenance type program so for me you know all my hormones are normal um, you know my brain fog has cleared up I have tons of energy uh, my sleep is really good my emotional my emotional life is really really good I feel really happy and optimistic when I wake up and I definitely could not not say that prior to removing all these different metals that I had. So what were the things that you did? So if you said, here's the top five things that I did that made me feel like a million bucks, what are those things? Well, number one thing I did an infrared sauna 
And I did that about, you know, three to five times a week. Sometimes I was good and did it almost daily. Um, but that's the number one thing that's really, really helpful to sweat out metals and chemicals from the body. And I also uh, started t taking lots of minerals. Minerals push metals out of the body. Everyone is deficient in minerals. So that's really, really important as a, a beginning detox. And uh, Which minerals I did you take? I took magnesium, zinc, selenium. All those are really, really important. Magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate are really, really important uh, to detox the body. Epsom salt baths. Do you have a brand that you kind of have on your site anywhere? Do you, do you sell any of the supplements on your site? Oh, yes. We have all different types. We have hundreds of supplements on MyersDetox.com. And I have my own line of supplements called the Myers Detox. And one of the kits that I developed was something that I use to help me detox. It's called the Mitochondria Detox. And it uh, has activated silica. And that helps to detox metals that cause fatigue. So that was really instrumental in my healing and detoxing cesium and aluminum and arsenic that I was plagued with. And then uh, the other part of that kit is something called Citra Cleanse, which is a modified citrus pectin that absorbs all different types of metals and chemicals. And so those are two really important basic things for someone just starting a detox that they can try. Uh, but we have other programs too where people can work one-on-one -on -one with, with a practitioner and do testing if they want to find out exactly what toxic metals that they have. Awesome. Now you talk a lot about metals making everyone so tired. Which metals specifically reduce your body's ability to produce energy? So metals that impede your body's ability to produce energy are arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, cesium, mercury, and lead. So many people have heard of mercury and lead before, but there's other metals like thallium that everyone has that most people have never heard of. And thallium is just naturally occurring in petroleum deposits. So we're getting that in car smog and uh, just pollution in the air. We're breathing it in. And it's a big factor in fatigue that people have. So many people reaching for that cup of coffee or reaching for carbs or sugar. Your body is just trying to desperately get some form of energy. Um, but you really want to be thinking about detoxing metals. If you're living this really healthy lifestyle and still aren't really feeling your best, you might be uh, you know, missing that important key, which is heavy metal detoxification. Mm. And so if someone was going on your website and they were like, you know, overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, there's, there's so many different things on here. If you, if someone came to you and said, I'm exhausted, I know that I have, you know, heavy metals, I know that I have parasites, what would you say are the two things they should order first to see if it works? Well, the best place to start to start a very simple detox is go to mitochondriadetox.com. And that is our simple two-step cleanse that will detox metals that cause fatigue, but gets a lot of other types of metals too. Um, but if people also just want to learn about their potential levels of metals they may have in their body, we have a quiz we developed. Then go to metalsquiz.com and uh, learn more about their metal toxicity there as well. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, let's jump right into the questions. Um, well, first, before I do, I always ask every one that comes on our show, I like to ask, like, what is a typical day in the life? Like, what do you eat on a typical day? Like, um, what are some of the things that you, is there anything you avoid? Is there anything that you limit? What kind of makes you feel your best for you? Well, I try to do intermittent fasting where I usually skip breakfast and I eat two meals a day. And so I try to make those meals really count. So I have an herb garden and I grow my own sprouts. So I try to make sure every single meal I have fresh herbs, which are very nutrient dense, mm -hmm. and I eat lots of broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts are very, very dense in sulfurophane. So they're very, very effective detox agents. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I eat lots and lots of those. And I do one fresh vegetable juice a day. Mm -hmm. And the best detox juice is using lots of celery. I put in cilantro. I put in lime and I put some apple just to make it uh, taste a little bit better. But that's very, very mineral dense 
detox drink, a juice, uh, that's really, really helpful as well. So I try to do that. I try to do either once a day an infrared sauna or a coffee enema, which is really a liver cleanse. And so that's a really, um, uh, you know, important. How often are you doing that coffee yeah. enema? Uh, I try to do one twice a week. So I'm not a fan of recommending them every day like some protocols, uh, but I'm more a fan of moderation. So I try to do an, at least an infrared sauna or a coffee enema every single day. Exercise is important to get the lymph flowing. And I went to a trampoline place, a little indoor trampoline area over the weekend. So that gets the lymph flowing, walking does the same thing. And then I take my mitochondria detox and I do other you know, detox supplements as well to remove my toxic metals. Yeah, it's amazing that, you know, the three things that I would say for me is that every day having that fresh juice, either I do a celery juice or spinach juice, um, just greens with a lot of that cilantro. That cilantro really makes me feel like a million bucks. And doing, I have an infrared sauna at my house and walking. So when I do those three things, I feel like a million bucks. As soon as I don't do them, I feel terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I mean, I just keep doing what makes me feel good. And I just feel like I have a clean, healthy body when I'm sweating out uh, my toxins and I'm eating nutritious food that makes me feel clean inside and gives me energy. All right, this is from Allison in Virginia Beach. Recently, I went to a health spa and I did a foot de detox. They had this guide that said, what are the different things in your water meant? I had a bunch of black flecks floating in my water, which said that heavy metals were in my body. That night when I went home, I was flossing my teeth without being rough or forceful. A huge piece of metal filling fell out of my tooth. Do you think this was just a coincidence? or somehow related to my detox. And we did get several questions on top of this one. Just asking that question, um, are these, do you, what is your opinion on these foot detoxes? Do you feel like, you know, they're legitimate? Do you feel like they're just a fad? Uh, do you think they really help? Yeah, so the mercury filling falling out was just a coincidence, um, but the ionic foot baths are great. I do recommend them, but uh, there's a little bit of confusion. The metals aren't coming out in the water. So really the change of color in the water, I think is more due to the, the mineral content of the water where people are. That What really is happening is the electricity in the water is uh, sending an electrical charge through your body and that helps your body to detox and that increases the urinary metal output of water two to three days following the ionic foot bath. And so that's really what's happening. It's not that they're coming out in the water so much. Um, but detoxification is not a fad. It's something that's incredibly important because our bodies are not evolutionarily equipped or designed to handle the levels of toxic metals and chemicals that we have in our bodies. The World Health Organization has done studies that show we have 500 to 700 chemicals in our bloodstream. Our liver is not equipped to break these down. We have to give the body more nutrients, more mineral, minerals that are not in our diet, the raw materials our body needs to detox and help uh, with liver detox and uh, infrared saunas. We need to help the body to detox because it, it's not able to do it on its own. Hmm. All right. This next question is Lisa in New York. Oh, let me ask you a question. So, you know, they have these different spas here that have the foot detoxes and so forth, but you can also go on Amazon, right, and buy some of these detoxes, you know, some of the kits that you can just do it at home. What is your opinion on the ones that they have, say, at the spa versus something you could order on Amazon? I don't recommend just going on Amazon and getting one because there's an electrical current going through the water. And so you can be electrocuted. So I only recommend getting one 
that is a medical grade one. The only medical grade one on the market is from AMD. It's called Ion Cleanse, and it's using surgical stainless steel. And so they're, they've just been around a long time. They have clinical studies uh, with various populations, autistic children, uh, that show that their product actually works. But there's a lot of garbage on the market. It's, it's, it's the same with infrared saunas. There's a lot of garbage on Amazon. I wouldn't be going to Amazon to buy any of my detox uh, protocol type equipment. So the one that you're talking about from um, AMD, those one that one right there that they have, that's like a two thousand dollar machine, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you either need to have good money or <laughs> um, go to a spa that kind of has that that one. But that's the one you really feel good about. Yeah, that's the one that I use and I recommend. There's also one, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart on his store. I think they have one that's $500 or 500 euros on on his store. And that's a good one also that I would recommend. That's a a lesser price. Gotcha. Okay. Um, And how often do you give your, do you do one of those foot detoxes yourself? I probably do about one a week. Um, I don't focus as much on those as I do the infrared saunas and coffee enemas, um, but I, I probably fit one in about once a week. And then with the coffee enemas, um, I'm assuming that you do them by yourself. And yes. where do you where do you buy the yours from? Well, the the kit that I had, I bought it on SeekingHealth.com. I'm not sure if they're they're still selling the coffee enema equipment, but you can get a stainless steel stainless steel coffee enema bucket on many places on the internet. You can use any organic coffee. Uh, it's totally fine. I have lots of instructions on my website on myersdetox.com on how to do them mm-hmm. and some tips and tricks the benefits, why on earth you'd want to do a coffee enema. And uh, so they're really, really effective mechanical liver detox. They're not for cleaning out the colon. It's not the same as doing a colon cleanse or doing a colon, a colon therapy where you're putting water in your colon and evacuating. That's not what we're doing. It's not for cleaning out the colon. It's for actually giving the liver some caffeine that dilates the the capillaries that then shocks the liver into excreting the toxins that it has into the intestines for elimination. So the whole point is the caffeine from the coffee. And so just some distinctions. Uh, Do you guys have a lot of places there? I don't don't know if we have any. I know we have some great places here that do the colon cleanse where they're just shooting water up into your colon and then having that, what is your thoughts on doing that, on doing the water with the colon and going and doing that to, to cleanse you out? I don't really think it has as much of a detox effect as the caffeine. Cause like I said, you know, the caffeine is really what helps, you know, shock the liver has like a hormetic effect where it shocks the liver into releasing its, to- releasing its toxins. And just the water by itself doesn't do that. Though for many that are constipated, uh, you know, cleaning out the colon with water is helpful for them. Um, but I, I don't think it's as effective. Hey guys, I'm so excited that my new book, Waste Away, The Chantel Ray Way, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much anywhere you can find books. But we also have the audio book, the e-book, and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that I love that I make, and it's super cheap. It's all my favorites. Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. Okay, this next question is from Lisa in New York. I've been trying to detox my life and recently have read a lot of makeup contains heavy metals. What are some ingredients that I should be looking out for when I'm reading cosmetic labels? And do you have any products and brands that you recommend? Yeah, so interestingly enough, you're not typically going to find heavy metals in the ingredient labels on makeup, even though they contain heavy metals, because they don't have to list uh, ingredients that are, say, naturally occurring in the ingredients that they are listing on the label. And so uh, a lot of different makeups can have aluminum, they can have nickel to give them sparkle, lipsticks can have lead. Um, There's a lot of different metals that can be in makeup. Bismuth is another one that's uh, fairly toxic that people don't really know about. Um, But you want to buy natural makeup. It's not necessarily going to be organic. It's going to be more natural makeups that have mineral-based mineral makeups. I really like Zuzu. 
that's a nice brand. I love Beauty Counter. Uh, I, I think I really recommend Beauty Counter as the number one makeup brand. They have a lot of amazing products. Uh, but even I recommend people avoid bare minerals makeup. They have a lot of good marketing, but all of my clients that use that have exorbitant levels of bismuth, which can cause uh, some different health issues. And so people aren't aware of that. It sounds natural, but it's, uh, I would avoid it. And that beauty counter, you really just get all that online? Yes. Yeah. Just beautycounter.com slash Wendy Myers. And uh, that's an amazing company. And they have a very, they have a really good high quality makeup line and a lot of different types of makeup. Some companies are very small that, that make natural makeup. They don't really have a lot of choice or the, the textures aren't really good. They don't really work very well, but Beauty Counter has everything that you're looking for. Awesome. This is Lauren in Alexandria. I have seen several doctors and have discovered that I have autoimmune issues, but I'm just trying to identify exactly what's going on and how to treat it. I know that my diet plays a big part of treating disease naturally, and I've heard some people talked about doing an elimination diet so that I can determine which foods are making me feel better and which ones are making me feel worse. What is the best way to approach an elimination diet, and do you have any advice? And, and this is, an, we, we got another question that was really good, kind of on the same, you know, we, same idea, but that people kind of say, you know, when they want to do an elimination diet, they feel like, okay, I know I'm not feeling good, so I'm going to eliminate this, this, and this. And then when they start eliminating too much, then they start feeling deprived, which then leads them into a binge. So uh, that's another thing to kind of talk about when you're answering this. Well, here's the thing. So doing an elimination diet is not easy, but it is free. And you can eliminate the most obvious sources of foods that many people have sensitivities to, namely dairy, gluten, and eggs, and soy. Those are the big ones. I have a food elimination diet guide on myersdetox.com. You can download the the Myers Detox, uh, I'm sorry, the Modern Paleo Survival Guides. It's something you get uh, when you join my email list. And so that gives you detailed instructions on the top 10 foods to eliminate and how exactly to do a food elimination diet. And so I think it's also myersdetox.com slash modern paleo diet where you can download that also. And so one of the easiest things to do is just testing for food sensitivities because there's a lot of foods people are sensitive to that you just can't eliminate and then t and challenge for. And so you could be sensitive to blueberries or cucumbers or things you'd never think of that are causing an immune response and inflammation. What kind of tests do you recommend and which one do you think are the most accurate to say these are causing an issue for me? Well, there's a test by Oxford Biomedical. There's LCAT. There's a lot of different tests. They're all very effective um, that you can get at a functional medical doctor. We don't do them, but we used to. But uh, there's a lot of really good uh, food sensitivities tests. Um, but here's the thing. You know, ultimately, you want to get to the root cause of why you're having food sensitivities. And so in order to have a autoimmune disease, you have to have leaky gut. And so you get leaky gut from uh, heavy metals, you get it from taking antibiotics, from not having enough energy to hold your gut cells together. There's a lot of different we reasons people have leaky gut and they leak out large undigested food particles into your bloodstream. And then that causes the immune response. That's the food sensitivity happening. And so you have to heal your gut and you also have to detox metals, uh, nickel and titanium and mercury are uh, big factors in uh, promoting autoimmune disease. And so detoxing those can be helpful. And we also offer a bioenergetic program called Nest Health that heals the immune system bioenergetically. And it's the most effective thing I've seen to reverse autoimmune disease. And so it's, it's something we use to, for clients that can't tolerate detox or they just uh, have way too many health issues and they can't even take supplements or eat any foods. We use this program with them for those people for people who are sensitive to supplements and also who to improve their ability to detox as well and absorb nutrients. Awesome. 
So this next question comes from Denise in Springfield. It says, on your last podcast, you talked about replacing all the metal fillings in your mouth. When I asked my dentist about this, he said I had to be really careful about how and who I have do this. Is there certain risks involved? And is there any reason I should be concerned with replacing my fillings? Um, My dentist, I actually am getting my fillings changed out too. I think I had three fillings um, I've had one of them removed so far. My dentist is super busy and he just, his advice was that he thinks I should get one done, removed, get one done, then removed, and then do one, not to get all three done at the same time. What would be your advice on that? Yeah, that's really, really important because I, I have heard many, many stories of people becoming very ill after having their mercury fillings removed. And that was the beginning of their health crises and they're still sick years later. So you really want to be very, very careful about this. So of course you want to go to a biological dentist that's going to use a dam, that's going to use a suction, that's going to suck out all of the metal shavings that can be released into your body uh, by drilling the mercury filling to replace it. So you have to be very, very careful when that's being done. If you can't afford to do that, you can actually go to Mexico and have amazing biological dentists remove your fillings for a tenth of the price. Um, So that's an option as well that I've had many clients do. Um, You can go to a regular dentist if they're using a dam and a suction, Um, but you don't ever want to go to a regular dentist and just have them drilled out and then replaced. That is a recipe for disaster. But yes, it's a very good thing to remove them one at a time, Um, especially if you're ill. You don't ever want to have fillings removed if you have cancer. Um, because that could uh, be very problematic for you. So it's not something you want to do if you have cancer. Um, But yeah, one or two at a time and taking charcoal after the procedure can help to absorb all the mercury or or the other metals. There's nickel, cadmium, aluminum, tin. It's an amalgam of other metals that are problematic. And so charcoal can absorb all of those metals so they don't you know, remain in your system and start causing problems going to your brain and, and other. Uh, so you recommend taking charcoal? On, on a limited basis, yeah. So not on a continual basis, but if you have an acute exposure you have an acute chemical or medical exposure, absolutely, um, because it's very, very effective, but it also absorbs n- nutrients and minerals, so it's not something you want to take on a regular basis. It can be taken occasionally, but for uh, you know a, a good binder to take on an ongoing long-term basis is my uh, Citracleanse modified citrus pectin. That doesn't have the absorption of minerals like other binders do. Okay. All right. This is from Jeanette in Midlothian. I want to start using natural cleaning products, especially in my kitchen for obvious reasons, but also on other surfaces that my small children come in contact with. The problem is I've tried some of these products and even made my own with essential oils and my house just doesn't feel clean or smell clean to me. Is this something that I need to get used to? Am I using the wrong products? What do you recommend? Yes. Well, I use water and vinegar and those work really, really well for a lot of different things. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to find products that work for you that meet your But, your but vinegar doesn't smell good. So are you putting essential oils in to mask that like a ton of lemon or... You know, I don't <laughs> because the smell goes away after a few minutes or, you know, an hour or something. It's, it doesn't last forever and yeah, it doesn't smell good, but you can add essential oils to it if you like. Um, but there are other, if you don't want to do the vinegar, uh, you can do other, there's other products on the market that are very safe. I really like mygreenfills.com. That's a great company for really good smelling laundry detergent that really works. Um, I love Charlie's Soap. Charlie's Soap is another great company that they have household kitchen cleaners and they have a, they have a nice scent. And there's other uh, products out on the market uh, that for wood cleaner, stainless steel cleaner, um, and other different products that work really, really well uh, that may meet your, the standards, make your, your house feel clean. Uh, Borax is a, a really good 
um, agent for an abrasive type cleaner. That's all natural. Uh, so there's a lot of different things out there. Sometimes you, you just have to try different products and see what, uh, what meets your, your standards. All right, Dana in Indiana. I was talking to a holistic health specialist and he told me that mercury was one of the most toxic, toxic substances that we're coming in contact with. He said even water can contain mercury. I had heard before about fish containing it as well. What are some things I can avoid and how can I minimize my mercury exposure? Are there certain types of fish I should avoid and certain ones that are safer than others? And then we had another question about asking, should they just get rid of tuna altogether? Should like, do you eat it and should they get rid of it altogether? Yeah, so there's a lot of distinctions that need to be make, made with mercury and fish. And so I don't think you need to throw the baby out with the bathwater, like avoid fish altogether, because the studies show, even for pregnant women, that uh, people are much healthier, babies are much healthier, have higher IQs if they have uh, the mothers ate fish. And so even if they have mercury in them. So it's more important to eat fish than to avoid it. Um, there, you wanna be sensible and avoid the most obvious sources of fish that contain high mercury, like the large migratory fish, like, like the ahi tunas that you get at sushi, typically, and the- um, so you're saying you should avoid those. Yes, but there's other types of tunas. So I wanna go through the list and make some distinctions here. So you wanna avoid the ahi tunas you get at sushi, um, but you, it's okay to eat the, the canned tuna typically, eat the wild caught tunas, because those are different types of tunas. Those are much, much smaller. And, but I don't say, you know, I don't want you to eat those every single day, but a can once a week is fine. But it's a smart thing to do to eat with that, have some cilantro extract with it or some coriander seed oil, which is cilantro seed. And those will bind to the mercury so it doesn't deposit in your body and you'll just excrete the mercury. See, the thing is, I love the only sushi I will eat is raw tuna. So yeah. like... If, if I, like I get a sushi roll right down the street and I get like tuna avocado, I don't get any rice. I just get it with um, like lettuce and different things. But I just, the only fish I'll eat is yeah. the, the raw ahi tuna. We'll just do the cilantro. So you just do cilantro extract and then I'll grab onto the mercury and the cadmium. That's in it. It's not just mercury that's a problem in fish. It's cadmium also. And so why does the fish have mercury? It's because of coal burning. So coal burning has uh, re released mercury into the atmosphere. That's why we breathe it in. That's why it gets in the water, gets in the oceans, and then accumulates in our fish. But the smaller fish don't live long enough to accumulate much mercury. So you really want to focus on those fish, like the anchovies, mackerel, sardines. Um, salmon live a little bit longer, so they do have some mercury, but typically much lower than the ahi tuna. So if you do eat fish, just have some cilantro extract with it, and then it's a little biohack you can do to enjoy it and enjoy the very high nutritional benefits benefits to be had in fish. Is there anything, where can people, like if you would say, this is what people need to do. If they, if they hear this podcast and they say, hey, I'm struggling with this, what do they need to do next? What's their next steps for you? Yeah, so if anyone listening is struggling with fatigue, brain fog, hormone imbalance, and is just can't really figure out what's going on with them, you're doing everything right and you still don't feel well, you really want to be thinking about adding detoxification to your health regime. So just go to metalsquiz.com. You can take our simple quiz that will help to determine your potential levels of metal toxicity. And then we give you some information about that. You can join our newsletter. Uh, you'll automatically be joined to our newsletter when you take the metals quiz. And then you'll start getting lots of education. You know, I have the Live to 110 podcast and we educate about detoxification and just it's really a wealth of information on my site. We've got hundreds of articles, hundreds of podcasts, uh, educating people about that very subject. Awesome. Well, we will put all these links down in the show notes to make it easy for you guys to click on all of the different ones. And if you don't mind, Wendy, sending any additional links to us, we'll add them into the show notes to make it easy for folks just to click on all these different links that you talked about. 
It was such a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much for having us. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to Chantel, go to questions at ChantelRayway.com. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.